To install Windows 98 SE under PCM, we need a couple of resources and I will make it really easy for you guys to follow this tutorial by putting links in the video description with all the resources. So we will need the emulator, we will need some ROM files for the various devices, we need the Windows 98 ISO, we can get that from winworld.com including the license key. We need drivers for the chipset, for the Voodoo and for the Sound Blaster DirectX 7. We have some benchmarks and also a bunch of games and game demos. To begin, we need to grab the ROM files, select all of them, hit copy, go back out, go into the PCM emulator, into the ROMs directory and here paste all the ROM files. And now we're ready to launch the emulator and configure our machine. This is the PCM configuration manager. Click here, enter a new name for our config. Let's go with Pentium 2 with Voodoo 3. Click OK. And here are a bunch of options. I will walk you through all of them. Change the machine to the last one. I want to build a slot one machine with a Pentium 2. Let's go with a Pentium 2 300. The RAM, I'm going to go with 256 megabytes. That is plenty. For the graphics, set this to the Voodoo 3, 3000. To change this option here to fast VESA local bus PCI. For sound, we're using the Sound Blaster PCI 128. And here we have options for storage. First floppy drive, I'm gonna change that to 1.4. Don't need a second floppy drive. Optical drive, that's fine. And we need to configure our hard drive. Press this button here. We want to create a new hard drive. Change this to dynamic size VHD. The reason I like to use VHD is because we can mount this in Windows and then it's really easy to copy files. Click here to create a file. We are on the desktop under PCM and I'm just gonna call it HDD. There it is. In terms of size, I go with 32 gigabytes, plenty of space and it doesn't take too long to format and that's it. Click OK. Next screen for the mouse, change that to Microsoft IntelliMouse PS2. Nothing to change here and we don't need any networking. Press OK. And now we can launch our emulator. First thing we need to do is go into the BIOS by pressing the delete key on the keyboard. Then we're loading the performance defaults. And the only other change is the boot order. So go here and change that until you see CD-ROM. So it boots from the CD-ROM first and then from the hard drive. And another change I like to do is go into the integrated peripherals and we're gonna disable some resources. We don't need the zero and the parallel ports. And before you press save and exit to setup, we need to talk about a few keys. Control end will release the mouse like I did just now. Click on CD-ROM, load image, go to Windows 98 SE and we're gonna put in that CD image. Save and exit, yes. And now the machine will reboot and boot from the Windows 98 SE CD-ROM. Here we're choosing boot from CD-ROM and then start the Windows 98 setup. Here, press enter, and it notices that the hard drive hasn't been partitioned, so it's, it will do that for us. Choose large disk support, and then reboot the machine again. And again, boot from CD-ROM, choose Windows 98 setup, and it will now format the hard drive. This will take quite a while, so let's take a short break. 95%, it's almost finished with the formatting. There we go, it just finished formatting 
and hit checking the hard drive and then commencing with the installation. Okay, here we go. Press continue, click on next. And here we can choose what sort of setup we want. I'm gonna tweak mine for playing games, but you can make your own selection. So let's have a look. We don't need everything. Don't need the calculator. Don't need that. No, don't need paint. Don't need any of that. Okay, let's just untick all of this. Don't need the address book. Don't need communication, don't need internet tools. The only thing I think we need is for multimedia with the volume. So let's keep the CD player and volume control. I believe that's all we need. Give it a good name. That's all fine. Next, next. Next. And it's now gonna do the first part of the installation, followed by a reboot, and I'll see you back then. There you go, it finished the first part of the installation and the machine will now reboot. Press delete again to get into the BIOS. And what I will be doing is changing the boot order so we're only booting from the hard drive. We don't need to boot from the CD-ROM anymore. Here we can enter some user information accept the license agreement and then here enter the license key. Just follow the link down below in the description to get the key from the WinWorld website. There you go. And now it will detect uh, the hardware of the machine, install some more software. This will take quite a while. So I will see you later, almost there. We just have to choose a time zone and then we can continue with the installation. Almost there, one more reboot. Here it's picking up the monitor. Just click next, untick the floppy drive and continue the process. And here we are on the Windows 98 desktop. I'm just gonna do a little bit of housekeeping, deleting some of these icons that we're not gonna use. I like to also Delete this one here. And then if you click on Start, Programs, Windows Explorer, hold down the Control key and just drag it down below so we have a shortcut. And then I also like to right click here, Arrange Icons, Auto Arrange, and we're good to go. So what we need to do is shut down the machine because we need to get the drivers, the games and everything into the emulator. We go back to all of our files and we need, yeah, all of them up to here. So select them, press the copy button and then this is the hard drive image. Right click, mount. So it's now opening the image uh, directly within Windows and I'm just gonna paste it directly into here. There's one more step we have to get back out and then eject the mounted hard drive image. And now we can fire up the emulator again and it will now have all the drivers, the games, the benchmarks, everything sitting ready to go on the hard drive. Okay, let's start installing some stuff. We're gonna start with the chipset drivers, run setup. Next, yes. Next, and reboot your machine. It's now detecting all the devices and installing the drivers. Click yes, another reboot. The Intel chipset drivers don't enable DMA mode for the storage automatically, so we need to do this ourselves. Click on device manager, under disk drives, the ID hard drive, settings, tick the DMA box, okay, okay close and reboot the machine. Next up are the graphics drivers. So we go number five, root of three drivers, run setup, next, accept the license, next, install, finish and reboot the machine. Here we go, now we have a nice desktop 
next is the Sound Blaster. Click on number six. Run that file. Yes. Next. With the online registration, just go cancel and say, do not remind me again. Okay, now we have sound. DirectX 7 is next. Double click on that file. Yes. Yes. And we need another reboot. Okay, and now just a few tweaks. I like to play with the mixer, making sure that all the inputs are muted, but we want to have the volume, the CD and the wave at a fairly high level. Next, we click Start, Settings, Control Panel. Let me make that larger. Click on Multimedia, Advanced Properties and change the sample rate conversion to high. There's one more tweak. Let's go back to our drivers. The Voodoo drivers, there's an overclock utility. Enable overclocking. We're not gonna overclock, but what this does is it will give us the V-Sync options. Under 3DFX overclock, we now have options to disable or enable V-Sync. For benchmarking, I like, yeah, you should have it disabled, but for playing games, I actually like to have it enabled it avoids screen tearing. And now let's install a benchmark. I've got 3D Mark here. Let's install 99 Max. To switch to full screen mode, press Control Alt Page Down. Unfortunately, it will stretch the image into widescreen, but there are some settings here to control that behavior. Uh, click on Video and then Output uh, Stretch Mode and put it to Square pixels and it will look like this. So this will use uh, some sort of a softish uh, scaling filter. If you like that razor sharp pixel look, there's another way to do this. You need to click on video and then scale filtering nearest. You will now have sharper pixels, but the scaling looks weird because it's not integer scaling. If you want integer scaling, go back here change the output stretch mode to integer scale and it will now look like this. Depending on what monitor you have, what resolution, uh, you have to choose a game resolution that integer scales well into the monitor resolution without <laughs> losing too much uh, uh, space. That was a lot of words, I will demonstrate. I'm using a 1080p monitor, so if I use something small like 640 by 480, that will scale 2x with a small black border at the top and the bottom, so that looks beautiful, but 800 by 600 doesn't fit nicely. Or you can go with 1280 by 1024, that also looks really beautiful at 1080p, just like this. And now before testing games, I like to run 99 Max just to see that everything is working correctly. In regards to performance, I'm just gonna to toggle back to window mode. Pay attention to this percentage here. It should be at 100% to make sure the emulation speed is accurate. Um, but a much better test is playing games and listening to the audio. If you hear any audio skips, stutters or looping and this percentage drops in, into the low 90s, then the emulated machine is too fast, choose a lower megahertz speed or your host computer is too slow, get a faster CPU. Okay, back to full screen, new 3D Mark benchmark, benchmark, off we go. There you go, we have 2,844 3D Marks and 3,874 CPU 3D Marks and that checks out, it's pretty close to the real hardware. Okay, now let's test a few games. I put some into this folder here. It's a mix of game demos and games. These are GOG releases. You just buy them, install them on your modern Windows machine, copy the folder onto your retro PC and no modifications required. Screamer 4x4 is a game I've been playing recently quite a bit. It has the Glide version. Okay, let's go 
into the options video that's all i'm just gonna leave that default audio i will turn off the music and now let's play a game i have turned on vsync it's just a personal preference championship weekend restart yes next i prefer the jeep but don't like that color next drive there you go switching to low gear and off we go so this is a game it's a little bit demanding for a Pentium 2 running at 300 megahertz but because we're using the glide api it runs heaps better than OpenGL or the direct 3d option that was the beauty of the 3d effects voodoo and the glide api it would yeah extract more performance out of an average machine and that's why it's so awesome and highly collectible and yeah it does a fairly good job and if you have a really fast machine you can try emulating a higher clocked Pentium 2 the machine I'm using is an Intel NUC 13th gen with an i7 I think it's an i7 1360p quite capable almost does 2000 in 2000 uh, points in Cinebench I was about to say 3D mark in Cinebench R23 the single core test so that's pretty decent but there are faster CPUs available for the desktop let's play one more game we have Total Annihilation. This is the demo version. You can get the full version from GOG. Unfortunately, it's patched to work on modern computers. Windows 10, Windows 11 doesn't work under Windows 98. So a good workaround is going to archive.org and just grabbing the ISOs and installing it that way. Okay, single player. Let's see. Yeah, we have options, visuals. So this game we can play actually at a very high resolution, 1280 by 1024. That should look beautiful. New campaign. I like it easy. Life is hard enough. Start. There you go. This is the first mission, not too difficult. We just have to head north and fight off some of our enemies, but they're fairly weak. We can't, we really can't uh, mine resources and, and, and uh, install solar panels for energy and build troops. So this is just a beginner level. But yeah, runs really well. I think this is a game that came out in 1997, so a Pentium 2 was a fairly decent machine at that time. So there you go. This was my tutorial on how to set up Windows 98 on the PCM with a Pentium 2 and a Voodoo 3. In the video description, you will find all the resources. I want you to have an, a really easy time replicating what I'm showing you here because more, more people should play these classic games. They are absolutely fantastic. And if you have any feedback, any comments, and any suggestions for future PCM videos, do let me know. I've only recently started playing around with it and so far I'm really enjoying it. It's really lovely seeing the buy screen and configuring the hardware and installing the drivers just like on a real machine. So yeah, I'm really excited. Hope you liked it. Hope you found it interesting. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos. Mostly we're doing videos about old computers and classic games. So slot one stuff, Windows 98 stuff, but now even more modern things like Core 2. Sometimes I venture out in more modern stuff, but I try to keep it <laughs> close.
close to the retro, to the older stuff. Well, I'm still here. I'm enjoying this game, so I might play a few more missions. Thanks for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.